Question number 6. Part A. Show that the equation 3 sin theta cos theta divided by 2 sin theta minus 1 equals 5 tan theta can be written in the form 3 sin cube theta plus 10 sin square theta minus 8 sin theta equals 0. The question carries 4 marks. We are given this expression 3 sin theta cos theta by 2 sin theta minus 1 equals 5 tan theta and they want you to prove that this can be written in this form. So how do we do that? When you look at it, all the trigonometric ratios are sine theta. That tells us that you need to convert everything to sine theta. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep cos theta as it is. I write tan theta by sine by cos. So when you rewrite this, you can write it as 3 sine theta cos theta divided by 2 sine theta minus 1 equals 5 sine theta minus cos theta. And then cross multiply. When you cross multiply, it becomes cos square theta. And we know the trigonometric identity sine square theta plus cos square theta is 1. So you can replace cos square theta by 1 minus sine square theta. So when you cross multiply, 3 sine theta cos square theta equals this term into 5 sine theta. 5 sine theta into 2 sine theta minus 1. Replace cos square by 1 minus sine square. So you will have 3 sine theta into 1 minus sine square theta equals when you multiply through you will have uh, 5 twos are 10 sine square theta minus 5 sine theta. You take 3 sine theta and multiply bring everything to one side and simplify you will get this. 3 sin theta into minus sin square theta is minus 3 sin square theta. Then you will have 3 sin theta, the 10 sin square, bring it here, minus 10 sin square theta. And you will have 3 sin theta plus 3 sin theta is plus 8 sin theta equals 0. It's the same as this. Only thing you need to multiply everything by minus 1. So this will become positive, this will become positive plus will become minus. That's our expression. That's it. It's so simple. You just need to know this identity and another one. Tan theta can be written as sine by cos and replace everything to sine theta and put everything to one side of the equation and you got the expression already. Part B. Hence solve for minus pi by 4 less than x less than pi by 4. 3 sin 2x cos 2x divided by 2 sin 2x minus 1 equals 5 tan 2x. Give your answer to 3 decimal places. The question carries 4 marks. Here they want you to solve this trigonometric equation. So when you compare this with part A, it's the same thing. Instead of theta, you have 2x. You see 2 sin 2x, 5 tan 2x. That tells us when you simplify this, you will get the same expression but in terms of uh, sine sine 2x instead of theta you will have sine 2x so this can be you don't need to simplify this again you can just copy from here so this can be written as 3 sine square 2x plus 10 sine square 2x minus 8 sine 2x equals 0 this is a cubic function. If you take sine 2x as something, let's say I'm going to take it as sine 2x as p. So this is p, sine cube here. 3p cube plus 10p square minus 8p is 0. When you solve this, you will get 3 solutions, 3p values, replace p by sine 2x. So you will have 3, sin, uh, three trigonometric equations. Solve them separately one by one within this limit. If you take p out as a common factor, you will have 3p square plus 10p minus 8 is 0. So p is 0 is one solution. And 3p square plus 10p minus 8 equals 0 is another quadratic equation. When you solve it, you will get another two p values. So we got other two p values. p is 2 upon 3 and p equals minus 4. So we got three solutions for this equation. 
Now replace uh, p by sine 2x and solve the trigonometric uh, equation separately. Now since p is sine 2x, replace p by sine 2x. So you will have sine 2x equals 0 in the first case. So since the theta is multiplied by 2, I am going to multiply the limits by 2 also. So we can solve this function, solve this equation within this limit. Instead of a minus pi by 2, pi by 4 to pi by 4, I am going to solve it for a minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. Sin 2x is 0, sin inverse of 0 is 0, 2x is 0, x is 0. Again, that's not the actual solution. Take it as a principal value. And if you consider this ASTC diagram, we are talking about minus pi by 2. This is minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. These two quadrants. So sine is 0. When you take a look at it, sine is 0 only when x is equal to 0 here. So the theta is here. So there is only one solution. Even if you look at the diagram of sine 2x, you will have pi by 4, pi by 2, minus pi by 4, minus pi by 2. So the function is this. That's the sine 2x graph within the limit minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. So sine is 0 at only one point. So you can take this as a solution, x is 0, that's one of the solution. Now we are going to consider the second case. Second case, sine 2x is 2 upon 3. So find 2x, which is sine inverse of 2 upon 3, take it as the principal value and look for a quadrant where your sine theta is positive, sine theta is positive here and here. So I got the principal value is 0 0.7297. This is our principal value, that's not the final solution. Now we need to consider this limit minus uh, pi by 2 to pi by 2. And look for a quadrant within this limit where sine theta is positive. Here sine is negative. So you don't need to take this quadrant or this quadrant. Sine is positive only here within our limit. So if theta is this, and uh, you need to use, put your calculator in radian mode because all the measurements are in radians. So your theta is here. So you can take theta as one of the solution, the actual theta as one of the solution. But I'm going to consider the second quadrant also, because eventually when you divide by 2, when you divide by 2, here I'm going to take pi minus theta. When you put theta as this, you will get some value which is out of the limit. But the moment you divide by 2, it will be in the this quadrant. So you need to take this quadrant also into consideration. So our two values are 2x equals the actual value, write it in three decimal place, 730, write it as 73. And another one is 2x equals pi minus this value, 97, etc. So find x, so you will get two solutions. So here x is 0 0.365 radians, that's another one solution. And when you find the value of this, we got x equals 1.206. So 1.206 is less than pi by 2. If you find the decimal value of pi by 2, it's more than 1.206. So that tells us this also comes under our limit, within the limit. So we got two solutions, 0 0.365 and 1.206. And we already got one solution in here, that's x equals 0. Now let's move on to part C, uh, the next one. Even if you want to verify this, if you draw a simple graph, this is our sine 2x. 
between minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. This is our pi by 4 and pi by 4. Our maximum value is 1, minimum is minus 1. This is our sine 2x. And if you draw a graph 2 upon 3, which is less than 1. So when you draw a line for y equals 2 upon 3, because we are basically talking about point of intersection, you are supposed to get two solutions. So we got two solutions. That's it. Now considering case 3, if you put sine 2x equals minus 4, even if you try to find sine inverse of 4, you won't get a solution because minus 4 is somewhere here. This is minus 4. For example, let's say there is no point of intersection at all. So for this case 3, you can't find a solution at all. You can just uh, neglect this. So we have three solutions, x is 0, x is 0 0.365 radians, x equals 1.206 radians. Question number 7, you are given a figure. Solar panels are installed on the roof of a building. The power P produced on a particular day in kilowatt can be modeled by the equation. You are given an equation, a function P, where T is the time in hours after midnight. The, you are given a table. Part A, use the given equation to complete the table, giving the values of P to four significant figures. The question carries two marks. Here you are given the function P, they want you to complete this table. That means uh, replace T by 10 here and find the value. Replace T by 11.5, find the value here and write the value in four significant figures. So the first value is when you replace T by 10, it's 1.2. This is 1.8819, so when you round it to three significant figures, four significant figures, 1.882, 2.45, and the next one is 2.821. That's it, it's just two more questions. Replace T by the missing values, replace T by this value here, and you get the value. Part B, use the trapezium rule, with all the values of P in the completed table to find an est estimate for the amount of energy produced between 10 and 12, give your answer to two decimal places. The question carries four marks. Now in part B, they want you to apply the trapezium rule to find the total energy produced between 10 to 12. So the trapezium rule is H upon 2, H is the width, it's a 0 0.5 here, into y0 plus yn, the first value and the last value, plus 2 into the rest of the sum of the rest of the y values. That's the trapezium rule. Just apply the trapezium rule. The width is 0 0.5 divided by 2 into first value 1.2 plus the last value 2.95 plus 2 times the rest of the values 1.882 plus 2.45 plus 2.821 so the answer is 4.614 around it to two decimal place it's 4.61 because they want the answer in two decimal place that's it you need to know the trapezium rule Substitute all the, plug in all the values of y not all the way until yn, all the values here, you will get the final solution. Question number 8. A sequence a1, a2, a3 is defined by a n plus 1 equals 2 into a n plus 3 whole square minus 7 and a1 equals p minus 3 where p is a constant. Part a, find an expression for a2 in terms of p, giving your answer in its simplest form. The question got one more. In here, they want you to find the value of A2 in terms of P. We have A1 already. When you substitute N is equal to 1 here, our A2 is 2 into A1, A1 plus 3 whole square minus 7. Replace A1 by this. So you will have P minus 3 plus 3. Minus 3 plus 3 can be cancelled. You will have 2P square minus 7. That's our A2. That's it. Just one more question. Part B. Given that summation n equals 1 to 3, a n equals p plus 15. 
Find the possible values of A2. The question carries 6 marks. Here you are given summation n equals 1 to 3, a n equals p plus 15. They want you to find the possible values of a2. So this can be written as a1 plus a2 plus a3, n equals 1 to 3, equals p plus 15. We are going to substitute the value of a1, a2 and we find a3 also and substitute here and simplify you will get the values of p, substitute the p back in here, so you can get the value of a2. So a3 is, a3 can be written as, if you replace n by 2, a3 is 2, a2 plus 3, 2 into a2 plus 3, whole square minus 7. But we know our a2 is 2p square minus 7, substitute here, you will have 2 into 2p square minus 7 plus 3 which is 2p square minus 4, whole square minus 7. Expand this, you will get 2 into a minus b whole square is a square minus 2ab. 4 fourths are 16, p square plus b square minus 7. So when you simplify this, remove the brackets and simplify, you will get 8p to the power 4 minus 32p square plus 32 minus 7 is plus 25. Substitute here. So a1 is p minus 3. a2 is 2p square minus 7. a3 is this. 8p to the power 4 minus 32p square plus 25 equals p plus 15. Simplify this, our p can be cancelled and you will have a minus 3 minus 7 is minus 10 goes to the other side plus 10, 25, 25. These constants also can be cancelled. So we are left with 8p to the power 4 minus 32 plus 2 is plus 30 p square is 0. So if you take p square as common factor out, you will have 8p square plus 30 equals 0. Equate them separately 0. So p is 0. That's our first solution. When you equate this to 0, your p square will be minus 30 divided by 8. It's not supposed to be minus 30. Something is wrong because uh, minus 32 plus 2 is minus 30. So you will have plus 30 upon 8. So when you find, uh, you can write this as uh, 15 upon 4. So your P is plus or minus square root of 15 upon 4. Or square root of 15 upon 2. Square root of 4 is 2. We are trying to find the value of A2. So you can straight away, you don't need to find the value of p, you can straight away substitute p square here. So when you substitute p square equals 0, our a2 is minus 7 and then substitute p square as this and find a2. So we got 2p square, first one is 0, another one is 15 upon 4. Substitute here, our a2 is, when you substitute 0, 2 times 0, minus 7. That's one possible value. When you substitute p square by, replace p square by 15 upon 4, our a2 is 2 times 15 upon 4 minus 7. So you will have a2 equals 15 upon 2. So you will have 1 by 2. So there are two possible values, minus 7 and 1 by 2. That's it. That's our solution.